After winning last week against T. Rowe Price in convincing fashion, we are on a roll in the Low Tier Mayhem Draft League, currently sitting in first place at 3-1. and one. This week we take on Dapper Snapper and his Appalachia Appletons, who are currently 2-2 two and two and looking to fight for their spot in the playoffs. These next two weeks are going to be difficult, as I am currently preparing for the Canadian Magic the Gathering Regional Championships in Montreal, which I will be playing in as this video goes live. In a season where focus and attention to detail has been key, these new next two weeks are important to make sure we keep the momentum and focus up, making sure we put in a good run for the playoffs. If you are enjoying this low tier draft league, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Our end of the year goal is 1,000 subscribers and every subscription helps along that journey. All right, we're doing a showdown team builder this week because I've run out of time, unfortunately, to get the video done <laughs> with the aforementioned tournament I'm going to. So. I'm recording this actually the morning before I go. So hopefully it goes really well. I'm confident in the deck that I put together, but enough of that, let's get right into the team. So I'm not gonna talk about the matchup too in depth and in detail. One thing I'll note with the matchup on screen now is that we actually had this team wrong. Um, there was not a Magnazone on this team. He had an Orthorm and you're gonna see that reaction in the game to that happening. Um, it doesn't change the impact of the t game too much, really at all, uh, but it does make an item on one of our Pokemon kind of useless. Uh, but let's talk about the team. Um, the main threats here to look out for are Kilowattril and Low Kicks. Those are like the two Pokemon that this matchup kind of focuses around on. Kilowattril is a Pokemon I don't think we struggle with that much. I think it's difficult for him to really get a grasp of what move to click at all times, um, but we still have to bring a lot of preparation for it because it hits really hard and your checks are just naturally going to take damage over time and naturally just not be able to do it anymore. So that's something we have to keep in mind. And then low kicks is really problematic for my team, actually. First impression just like puts so much pressure uh, on my team. And, and we do have Okie Doki at least, but the calcs on Okie Doki are not even that favorable to be honest. So it's going to be a little bit of a difficult one that, but let's get into the team and talk about what we're doing. I'm not going to get super in depth on, on the EV spreads or anything. As I said, we need to kind of keep this quick today because i'm doing this before work um but av crocodile av crocodile is one of our kill the watch roll um checks this is also good against porygon 2 or porygon z rather not porygon 2 which is why we have close combat um gives us an ability to check that as well because uh, this close combat will always pretty much kill um most sets that are reasonable um with this we do a moxie it kind of went back and forth on whether moxie or intimidate mattered more um I think maybe Intimidate probably could have been a little bit better, but um, it is what it is. Moxie at least allows us the opportunity to chain some kills in the end game. I mean, some of those bulkier Pokemon like Solobro, for example, which is really difficult for this team to handle. Uh, we do have Choice Scarf Oxy. This is some additional counterplay to some of the nonsense that Dapper has. It includes his Kilowattril and Flygon. Flygon, well, not a great Pokemon by any means. We do... It does outspeed a lot of what we're doing. It does outspeed Pokemon like Reggie Drago, uh, Ogie Dogie. Um, it can outspeed the Crocodile. I'm not that it's doing a lot necessarily to Crocodile, but we don't have Crocodile ourselves. Like we don't have a way to really hit it back. So Choice Scarf this week, Psychic Noise, Knockoff, Ice Punch, and Side Shock. Psychic Noise gives us a move to click into the Slowbro to prevent Regenerator healing which can be really useful for set Pokemon to come in again and take a little bit more chip. That, that's Pokemon is going to be really difficult to play around this matchup. Uh, we are lax in nature, and that's mainly just because of the fact that we need plus defense, but don't want to lose special attack on rolls against stuff like Virizion with their Psy Shock and Psychic Noise. Um, and we want, you know, the plus defense to be able to take hits from Pokemon like the Flygon. Um, we still do have a little bit of spit up there just to eat some general hits, but this is one, uh, we're running lax here just to make sure that we don't lose any special attack. As it's the only, you know, the only stat we don't have EVs in, but we need to make sure that stat is full. Uh, Shed Shell, this is basically what I was saying. Like, this set is designed to get free Stealth Rocks against Magnezone, which I guess is not happening <laughs> in this game. Uh, flip Turn allows us to kind of Flip Turn and, and get things in on Slowbro, um, which is nice. As I said, Slowbro is really problematic in this matchup. Um, so Slowbro is a common answer to this, and a flip turn allows us to position something like Iron Leaves or Ruggy Drago, which is on this team, uh, to pressure that Slowbro. Otherwise, Rocks, Roost, uh, Surf. This is a good PZ answer at times as well, which is super useful. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of where the team <laughs> was built with Magnazone in mind, and that did not happen. 
Uh, Ogie Dogi, um, Rocky Helmet. This probably could add more HP and more defense, honestly, to better hand low kicks, but we went pretty much full attack adamant just to pressure oncoming switch ins. Um, high horsepower gives us a move um, to click against um, the Pheasantipity. Uh, knockoff is obviously very good. Ice Punch for flag on switching in if that somehow ends up being an option. I don't really think so, but good to cover that if it happens. And then Close Combat is the move we're going to click the majority of the time, assuming Pheasantipity is down uh, to deal the most damage possible with this. But this is entire goal is to switch in two low kicks and absorb those first impressions and get a general sense of what the set is. Lumberry Iron Lee setup, Terra Ground. We brought this set, I feel like, a million times. We do have Lumberry this week. We were heavy duty boots and changed this at basically at game time. And the reason we change this is this allows us to be aggressive against Slowbro and switch it on Scald while in the grass type form. Uh, so it allows you to kind of take a burn one time and, and open this up to be a little more aggressive. So Otherwise, standard set. And then AV Reggie Drago is basically the same kilowatt roll defensive options that we've been building towards. Scale Shock gives us some late game capabilities to outspeed stuff like kilowatt roll. If the Pheasantipity is down, Earthquake actually does have some rolls after rocks and some chip to do a KO, uh, which will be really nice. But Scale Shot then allows us to outspeed stuff like kilowatt roll in the end game if we pick off something at the end so kind of a good coverage you know good utility move there to get some speed in, but we're mainly going to be clicking stabs and earthquake with reggie drago in this matchup so that's the team let's get right into the battle all right we're in the battle so one like oddity about this is um he has orthrum on this team and we have shed shell and polyon i think we thought and I, I don't know if the doctor's just not updated. It is what it is. It happens. Not a big deal. Um, we have Shed Shell <laughs> and Polyon for Magnezone. Uh, but he has Orthworm instead. Well, so, at the end of the day, not that big a deal. We play the cards we are dealt. Um, no Porygon Z is pretty big in this matchup. So, how do I want to lead? I, I think I want to lead with the Reggie Drago. That's kind of the lead that I had the entire time. I don't really want to waffle too much outside of that. Uh, if he leads Flygon, I have Uxi. Uh, if he leads the low kicks, I have Ogie Dogi. And I really want to get information on that low kicks if I can early uh, and often. So we're going to lead with Assault Fest Reggie Drago. Good luck. Have fun to Dapper. And let's get into it. He is Terra Ground on Kilowatt Roll. The Terra I thought he was going to be was Terra Ground. Um, I think Terra Fairy might have potentially been a little bit better uh, in this matchup. But I think Terra Ground covers... Um, some certain options all right in comes the kamala um I, w I wouldn't say we have like the you know our prep is like certainly super kamala based <laughs> if i had to say but luckily uh we have the ogie dogi in the back and ogie dogi with rocky helmet is just going to be the best answer possible to the kamala now he could obviously have earthquake but i expect something like a knockoff or a u-turn to come on here most likely uh, and that'll give me some early chip and some early momentum. So he does go for the yawn. The question here, um, that's an interesting spot now. So we, we get the first bit of information with this battle. So I could have just attacked there, which would have been fun. Um, I kind of expect Slowbro to come in. I think it would be really difficult. I, I, I don't think he can fighting move here. Um, I don't even think he gets a fighting move, to be honest with you. I'm going to go into... He also has no Pheasantipity, so I can be a little bit more liberal here with my Empoleon is the main thing. Um, this is access to like low kick and brick break. I'm gonna go into this because I expect Slowbro to come out um, to eat this close combat is, is what I would guess. I don't expect something like an earthquake here um, by any means. And this gives me opportunity to get Stealth Rocks up and that puts a little bit of chip on the Kilowattro, which we do need in this matchup. Just a little bit of chip on Kilowattro will do kind of a world of good. Um, he elects to double fast guy. I was like, oh, did he get a Kilowattro play? Like, that would have been a pretty good play on his part uh, if he got Kilowattro in. But we're going to set up Stealth Rocks here. That's what we're, we're here for. Let's get some rocks up. We can be, as I said, a little bit more liberal with HP on this because of the fact that there is no Pheasantipity. Uh, he does reveal to be Iron Defense. Um, Iron Defense is a little frustrating. Um, man, would have been really nice to have had Encore on this now. Um, luckily for me, let me do the Reggie Drago calc. 
So luckily Dragon Paul, you know, I think we should be be fine either way um, against this Pokemon. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go for the flip turn here. I'm expecting another Iron Defense to come out here. He could, um, so what is he going to be? Iron Defense, Body Press, Rest, and probably Psychic Coverage, if I had to guess. Um, I can get really aggressive here and go into my, what's it called? my reggie dragon i think i'm going to do that because i kind of think he's going to i kind of think he's going to body press but a body press at plus two um is it to a ko all right i'm gonna lock lock in here a little bit and think about how i want to sequence this i kind of think oh man this is a little bit a little bit unfortunate um because i kind of think he's just going to body press so i'm going to go into this first to get some initial chip on this thing um, I mean, if he goes for another thing, yeah, okay, so he does go for the initial body press. And this does put a little bit of chip. Thing is, I'm not getting this into range of Draco Meteor. This is close-ish to Draco. This is kind of Draco range. So at this point, I assume Psychic Coverage is going to come out here. So I'm going to go into, or another Iron Defense is going to come out. So I'm going to go hard into my Reggie Drago here to get a Draco Meteor off on this, because if he goes for the Iron Defense again, or Psychic Move, then I'm in a really, really good spot against this Slowbro. And he is just gonna Psychic, perfect. And we are AV, so we're gonna take that. And we should be able to take any Body Press after this. So, um, I guess I drop a Draco. Um, do I want to Dragon Pulse to be safe? Let me, let me be you know, extra careful on this Cal. I kind of think I want to Dragon Pulse twice, because that, I'm gonna have to, you know, I don't know if I can hit this range. No, I'm gonna, I think I should go for Draco here. I think Draco Meteor is my best play. If I miss, then I still have another chance to hit it, and then I can revenge it with anything. So I'm gonna drop a Draco. This gives me a chance to kill this, which maintains the switch in for Kilowattrol. Perfect, okay. That could have been a really, really bad um, start to this game, but we have played around that. Uh, pretty well, so I'm I'm happy with that. That could have gotten really dicey really quick, but we we locked in and prevented that from being a problem. So now let's see what he wants to go into. The last time he was in, he went uh, into Kamala on this, and I think this is the Kamala. Yeah. So we know this is y Yawn. The one thing that's really nice about this uh, at this point in time. Is that I can kind of I, I don't I still don't want to stay in with Ogie Dogi as I go in. Like I'm still gonna go in here because this is my my best kind of answer to this. And if he goes for the yawn, he goes for the yawn. I could go into Empoleon actually here. I do I do have to be mindful of this thing's HP because I would, you know, potentially like it to be able to kind of put some get some value in against the Orthworm. So I do have to be mindful of that. Um, but I mean it is an Orthworm, so I'm not like it's not at the end of the day too concerning. I do, yeah, I do kind of want to preserve this. So I guess the question is, is what do I go into from here? Because I think, um, I mean, fighting move definitely kills the Kamala. Yeah, like this thing, like it's obliterated like 10 times over. So I kind of think he, I mean, does he, does he give me this at this point? It got hazards off. Um, he could go into something like Kilowattrol. He doesn't, he could earthquake to stay in. Um, I'm just gonna close combat. If I if I pick this up, I pick this up. Oh, he's faster because of the speed. Oh, that was just, that was a complete oversight for me. Luckily, I have a lot of bulk and he is Choppleberry. So I think a little bit of an oversight, I have to do, be mindful of that. It kills through it anyway, because the calc is like 181 to 213. So Kamala down to Ogie Dogi. Um, so one of my potential ways to damage the Orthworm is death. So that is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but Empo Surf should be doing a lot to that anyway. Uh, yeah, like it's doing over half. So like that's not that big a deal. Flag off. All right, here comes Flag on. Um, here comes the, they let us use anything in Draft League Pokemon. Um, the problem here is that he can U-turn pretty safely. Um, and as much as I would like to keep this around, I, one thing to note is I have kind of lost a little bit of my counterplay to the um, to the low kick. So I, I think I was not, I, I had to be a little bit more mindful of that and I wasn't. So I have to be extra careful around low kicks now. Um, 
question here is do I want to preserve this as a sack? I kind of expect a U-turn to come out here if I'm at all honest. Um, do I have a good switch in the U-turn though? I, as I said, I kind of want to preserve. I think Empoleon is going to have just that little bit more use and I get a, a free switch here. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna Ice Punch. Let's see, let's see if he stays in. He just U-turns. Okay, so we lose, um, we lose our Ogie Dogi, which I, uh, I, I should have like known about the speed booster, should have played around that. That was just kind of a not, that was not a great way to play that sequence, but, um, you know, especially now that we've lost like one of our best ways to, to manage low kicks. Now low kicks, a lot of sets can still attack through uh, and first impression is the major problem on a choice band set with that. So I just have to make sure I have more Pokemon than him by the end of the battle. Like that, that's the most critical thing in this battle at this point is preserving my, my numbers advantage at this point. I kind of expect low kicks. If I, if I had to guess, it's probably low kicks that comes out here. Now, if he is low kicks, I can go into Wormy. Okay, it's this thing. This thing. Uh, I can go into Crook to <laughs> close combat, not obviously Earthquake. Um, the Orthoworm. Uh, oh, that does like actually pitiful damage, never mind. So I think I'm just going into. Um, Draco does a lot, um, but I think I'm just going to Empoleon. This is like basically against the max HP, always a two hit KO. So I'm just gonna go into Empoleon. Empoleon's usefulness is like kind of low uh, in this game. Now I kind of probably would like to have had this to have more, um, another way to put pressure on the low kicks. That's the one thing I'd probably have to to eat a hit from Iron Leaves with uh, against low kicks at, at this point, uh, which is not great. Now he doesn't have a good switch. Oh, he's just gonna start spiking up and he is faster than me. Okay, this is naturally faster. Okay, so this is about max HP, and we got a good enough roll that we're always killing uh, this the turn after. So he could body press here, uh, but if he body presses, I have a 5 to 3 advantage of Pokemon. So first impression becomes a lot less of an issue in that case. You know, once again, that's kind of what I'm playing to prevent losing to here is the, um, the first impression. So I'm going to surf again. If he body presses, he body presses. Um, he endures. Okay. Um... Is this like Endure Lychee Berry or something? Or Endure Custap? Custap. Oh, what are you going into Custap with this? What is what is our angle for Custap? Just set up another spike? Oh, I put up Empoleon here. Ortho Worm. It's just going to be ground move, I think. I, I think I kind of want to get aggressive to save this for the low kicks and just go into my, um, my Uxie. I actually think that's going to be my best play here. I expect the move to try to super effectively hit uh, the Sympoleon. And I can go into Uxie and either tank a fighting move or tank an Earthquake. Because this doesn't have like Boom or anything. And I don't, I mean, if it did, he wouldn't be clicking it on that turn. And he does Earthquake. Nice. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, because I am Choice Scarf, I'm going to lock myself into Ice Punch. And the reason I want to lock myself into Ice Punch is if he goes into Flygon. I don't think he's going to go into Flygon. Uh, but I do want to be mindful of that. Um, so I do think I'm just going to Ice Punch here and protect against that. That protects against like random switches that just could be problematic. Uh, but there we go. Uxie on the board here. Um, I don't know if that reveals my Choice Scarf set. Probably not because he probably doesn't have any speed investment in this. Um, so let's see. Pumped Up Kegs. That's a good name. I, I love that name. That's a pretty fire name. Um, okay, so at this point, I kind of do have to pick a sack um, into this Pokemon. Uh, once again, we are at 5-3. to three. Um, I think my best play is just to go into Empoleon here. Um, I think that the Regidrago can eventually, at some point, live a Draco. And I expect this to potentially be choice because he did bring Rapid Spin on his team. So it's pretty likely that he needs protection on his low kicks here for that. So I'm just going to go into Empoleon to eat what is most assuredly going to be a first impression this turn. Um, I don't think he wants to risk anything else uh, going wrong. Let's bring up the low kicks, Calx. 
This is where we really need to be mind. This is this is the important calc we need to figure out here. What is this low kick set against Empoleon? So let me you know pay extra attention here to the HP. I'm at full. I take a spike. I go to he leech lifes. After a spike, does about this looks to be adamant choice band because that would have done about 230. So we know this is adamant choice banded now. Um, so that's really good information here. What does that allow us to do? Um, it doesn't allow us to do a lot. It allows us to go, man, we do not actually have a really good answer to this. We can go in and knock off, actually. So what I'm going to do is just, I mean, click flip turn, I guess. I think I have to get rid of this choice band. What other option would this afford me? Terra Ground doesn't really give me an option. I think I have to knock off here with Choice Scarf Uxie. Um, it, it does basically mean I sack this Uxie. Oh, I don't like this position that I'm in, uh, in, in kind of in any way. Um, but it allows me to check this with Reggie Drago after the fact. Yeah, I have to do this to check with Reggie Drago. It just kind of is what it is at this point. Not, not a fan of this, but if we remove the Adam and Choice Band off of it, then we're in a little bit of a better spot here. So let's go for the knockoff. I wonder if he does play around this. I don't expect it to, but yeah, lo losing all of that HP early on, um, losing all that HP early on Okie Dogie and not having it for this situation to force a lot of Rocky Helmet pressure is really tough. Because now I don't really have a great answer to it. I kind of, I had Scarf Crocodile for a while and Scarf Crocodile would have helped in this scenario and we probably could have been Intimidate too instead of Moxie for this spot which would have made this a little bit more playable. Um, but alas, I think knockoff here is just going to be the play to get to get this choice band off. Um, and then I assume... Uh, I don't die. Yeah, I don't die so I can... I don't think I can switch though. He's gonna withdraw, wow. Okay. And he goes into this. So he is like scared of something. And this is Choice Scarf. Um, Choice Scarf Kilowattrel. Well, all right, so this is what this is for, this entire thing. And I do have Scale Shot. Scale Shot actually, does Scale Shot win me this game potentially? Um, it does a damn good job. Damn, it's damn close to doing so. Because I just need a little bit of chip on... Uh, the low kick's got fucking first impression though. Which is so, so annoying in this spot. I really think we needed an Intimidate uh, on this set. Unfortunately, on Crooked Isle, which would have made this... Uh, a lot better, um, but I think we're still. In a, I think we're still. There, there's still plenty of outs here, uh, and he can't lock into first impression. That's one thing we 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 know he can't really do is lock into first impression um, in this battle that effectively because we still do have we we still do the Pokemon numbers to our advantage. So let's let's keep that in mind uh, as we play around this. Discharge. We should eat that all day. All day. Don't para. Thank God. Uh, Alright, I think I scale shot here. I think scale shot is my most effective way to play this. We know it's adamant choice band. It is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, the scale shot kills. I think he has to sack this Pokemon, to be honest with you. Um, he can't switch in his low kicks. I guess, does he just sack this? I mean, if I do this, then I force him to go into low kicks to a revenge kill. Um, he can't really kill me with anything else, with any two moves. Uh, I think that I do scale shot here to force him into the low kicks and force him into a first impression turn. Because if I force, yeah, if I force him into a first impression turn, then I have a really, really advantageous position once he kills this. Air slash, he's going for the flinch. Do not flinch me. Okay, perfect. And we hit. Just need a big three hit. I actually don't think the three hit matters because we are EV. Yeah, so we're EV to outspeed this thing every time. Uh, at plus one, now that we know that the Choice Scarf is off. Yep, this outspeed's timid. So, we're just going to go for the kill, go for the Dragon Pulse. We outspeed. And there we go. Big kill against Kilowattrol. And 
once again, the, the, whole, the whole plan of this is to limit the number of opportunities that this Pokemon, this low kicks gets to come in and click first impression. Because that's the problem with Adam and Choice Band here. I keep I keep harping on it, but it's it's so important to how this end game is, is going to play out because I think we've done enough to limit the amount of turns he has in first impression. Because he brings it out here. Um and I'm definitely faster at this point, because he's not he, I mean he could be Scarf. Uh but I outspeed Scarf. I don't outspeed Scarf. I mean, if he doesn't first impression, then I kill with Dragon Pulse. And if he is first impression, then I go into Uxi, and then I think we have this one here. So I'm just gonna Dragon Pulse, force into first impression. Because if he first impression, he kills me. If he doesn't first impression, I kill him. And then we're in a, a really good spot. He sucker punches, okay. So this is Adamant, and he is sucker punch. Okay. Uh, all right, that is probably good. Uh, the Uxie Calc on Sucker Punch is is pretty in my favor. Um, so that was Adam and Choice Band. Like, I'm doing the calcs in my head. Like, that has to be Adam and Choice Band. Like, I don't think there's, like, a world where that's not Choice Band. Um, uh, Adamant. So I can go into this, knock off the Flygon. Cause I don't really want to go Iron Leaves. I guess what does more? Uh, I'm not still not a fan of this position. Is my play still to go in and knock off with this? He was scared of this last time. I think I do want to knock off. I'm gonna go into this. I'm I, it, it's it's Adam and Choice Band. We know that calc. We we know that calc. And this puts it into position if it is. Like, he's not staying in here by any means. Uh, maybe I, I should have gone into, uh, what's it called, Iron Leaves to finish out this type of endgame. But I'm not 100% confident that that would have worked out. Flygon, a combination of knockoff plus close combat should should do plenty here to get what I'm looking for. He's just, oh, he's sacking this thing off? Was that a crit? No. This was choice ban. Was this a was this a throw? I wonder if this was a mistake to have played it this way because I could have swore he was going to switch out. But I'm going to close combat here, I guess. Maybe I should have CC'd. Maybe I should have CC'd first. Yeah, maybe I CC first there. Um. I mean, this comes in... <laughs> oh man, I think I'm, I'm like in a, just a poor spot. I don't like how I played this. So if I go in... I'm gonna go into this. This is my best play here and make this a ground type. So I do have the ice coverage. I do have the choice scarf... Uxie in the back with ice punch. Like this is still decent for me. It's still... I very much want a leaf blade here. I could SD, SD, um, cause he doesn't have, he leaps lifes against ground, he is taking, no, I'm just gonna leaf blade, and deal as much damage as I can, cause if he switches out, he switches out, oh, man, I think this, yeah, this did not go at all to plan, unfortunately. But I think I think there's still a chance that this game can be pulled out. I'm really surprised he stayed in to eat the knockoff. I think I should have CC'd that turn though. That would have made this end game, I think, a lot cleaner for me. Uh with the choice scarf C. But Alright, let's see what we got. Show me what you got. If we got a leap like crit, that would be kind of funny too. I think that would potentially also uh do a lot to get this game. Right, we chew. We just need Ice Punch to do like 25%. He is in crit range, I think, now though, which is nice. Oh, this game was super dodgy <laughs> the whole time. Does he switch? He might switch here into Flygon. I mean, I can protect against that by going into my, um, my Uxie at that point. Yeah, because then he's just in range, and I go my own Uxie. And I don't 
even if you Scarf Outrage, it doesn't 2 a KO. So I have a lot of protection against this, I think. I think I'm still fine. I, I truly think I'm still fine in this game. I think this game got a little hairier than it needed to, but I think we're still okay. Goes for the Sucker Punch. I don't kill. Well, this is definitely in range. This is definitely in range. Oh, there's no way I switch here, right? No, that would be a horrible play. I mean, I'm always living. Uh, I always live Sucker Punch. Yeah, I mean, I'm always living, so I'm just attacking. Um, I mean, this is guaranteed now in range of Ice Punch, and we're Scarf Ice Punch, so we might just be, might just have gotten out of dodge here. Okay. Um, oh, I guess he could switch in first impression, but if he switches in sacks, then he, lo then he loses. Um, because the, the Flygon just dies. Alright, so I think Scarf Ice Punch does it here. I think Scarf Ice Punch has enough to bag this, to, to finish this game off. Which is probably not something he was super expecting here. And I wonder if he even sucker punches here, to be honest. He might just think he kills with like leech life or something. Wow, what a game. This was <laughs> this was certainly a game of all time. Yeah, like if he suckers, he does his most 50, and then he needs to crit with Jolly Choice Scarf um, to win this game. So wow, what a what a game of Pokemon, honestly. Wow, that was <laughs> that that one made me sweat to the very very end, but look, that's we've been playing a lot better recently, and I don't think that was the best I played, but I'm happy that I I played well around the slow bro. Um, had some good turns against the Orthworm. We should live. Oh, that, is that a crit? Oh, of course, that's a crit. Oh no! <laughs> God damn it! Oh, that crit's really really bad <laughs> oh my goodness I mean I could have played that better um, he d he is chipped so this is a good range for me I mean if he's outrage dragon claws not a range from choice scarf and I am choice scarf so let's hope we hit he is not Yachi any freezers Wow, that's crazy. That that freeze is crazy. Oh my god. I don't know if it mattered. Uh oh, he probably U-turned there. Uh no, there are quite a few U-turn rolls that don't kill there. Um Wow. Um that is yeah, from Jolly <laughs> Max Knight. Wow, that is that is certainly a way to end this game off. Wow. A freeze on the flygon. I Look, was I bailed out here a little bit? Probably. Did I probably deserve to win this game? I don't think so. I think there were ways I certainly could have played that better. But look, hey, we'll take we'll take a win where we can get them. I mean, he did crit the the uh, what's it called the thing. So realistically, that kind of you know there's a little bit a little bit of give and take there. But Uxie Uxie Masterclass from Choice Scarf Uxie picks up three kills that game. And we moved to four and one in the LTM. Something that, honestly, considering if you watched the last two leagues I did, probably unlikely you would have predicted that going in. So, next week we play against Addison. Um, she is also four and one, I think, at this point. So, um, that's going to be a pretty important game in terms of the top of the standings. Um, and you know, whoever goes five one, I think, will have a pretty clear race, you know, an opportunity to get those first couple seats. So that's the end of the battle. Make sure to check out Dapper in the uh, description down below. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, have a wonderful day.